So as of about 15 minutes ago, Flash CS4 is now uh, available for download. So I'm going to start a series of tutorials showing off some of the new features. And in this first one, I'm going to show you one of the best new features, and that's the motion editor. And that gives you the ability to create some really advanced animations. And then being able to save those animations as motion presets. So I've already set up my FLA. I have a new document called motionpresets.fla with a black background, 30 frames per second. Um, and then I have a layer called Flash that just contains a movie clip of the Flash icon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this icon in 3D, um, you know, so it creates a nice seamless loop of 3D animation. So the first thing I, I need to do before I do any type of animation is to create a motion tween on this layer. So I'm just going to right click and choose create motion tween. So that drops in a motion tween 30 frames long or one second by default. So for this animation I'm going to increase it to 50 frames because I want the animation to happen over 50 frames. Now if I wanted to I could now grab the 3D rotation tool and start rotating this and animating it here on the timeline. But One of the great new features is we can actually do all of our animation in the motion editor um, if you want to and for things like 3D animation it's actually a lot easier to do it all from the motion editor. So I'm going to open that up and I'm just going to hide the properties panel for right now and let's bring this up. Okay so we can see here here are all of my properties. Now this dashed line that you see on all of the properties that essentially means uh, that no keyframes have been set for any of these properties. So we're actually going to be animating the rotation Y and rotation Z properties. So I'm going to first select rotation Y and we can see now uh, I can have a zoomed in view of rotation Y and we can increase this slider for viewable frames so that we see all 50 frames. So now obviously when I start out I want it to be at a rotation of zero where it currently is but when I get to the end of the 50 frames I want it to go to 360. So I'm going to put that in and we can now see that over the course of, this, of these 50 frames we're now rotating 360 degrees. So now if you were to try to do that on the timeline and not in the motion editor um, you kind of run into issues where Flash you know, takes shortcuts on the animation. So for things like this it's definitely easier to do it in the motion uh, editor. Okay so now we've set the rotation Y and I can just hit enter to see what that looks like and if I hit command enter we'll see that now we have just a nice looping 3D animation. We're going to add rotation on another axis here so I'm going to go to rotation Z and again here uh, at frame 50 I'll just make sure the playheads at frame 50 and now I'm going to put in a value of negative 360 and we can see here what's happening uh, it's starting at 0 and going down to negative 360. So now when we scrub here you can see it's moving on two axes um, giving us this nice animation. If I hit uh, control or command enter you can now see we have this nice looping 3D animation. So pretty complex stuff but extremely easy to do um, in the motion editor and again it's much easier to do it here than it is actually out on the timeline. But what I can do on the timeline now let's say I want to make this slower I can just drag this and all of the keyframes um, are going to be moved uh, so that the entire animation is now happening slower. Okay so that looks pretty good let's say I want to save this out as a preset so later on I could apply the same type of 3D rotation to any object. Well, That's extremely easy to do so I can go back here uh, expand this panel and now I'm going to go to motion presets. So the motion presets panel um, first off it comes with a with a whole range of default presets and if we click here we can see uh, the previews of what those look like. Now some of them are better than others uh, as you can see here's a fly in with blur uh, there are some 3D things here um, but to be honest they're not done quite as good as what you could do yourself 
Um, and you should definitely aim to create your own presets that kind of match your animation style. Okay, so now that I have this, now I can come under custom presets and I can click this save selection as preset button. So now it's asking me to give it a name and let me see, I'm going to call it 360 rotation 3D and click OK. So now you can see under custom presets I now have um, this item in here. But one of the things you'll notice is there's no preview. So what I'm going to show you is a little shortcut to be able to get a preview um, for your presets. And again, these presets are going to be saved um, you know, after you close Flash. These are always going to be here uh, for you to apply to your later projects. So this movie that I've created here um, using this new preset, um, I can take this motion presets.swift file and actually create the preview out of it. So to do that, I'm going to go into Finder. Now this is the path where it's going to be on Mac. On Windows it's going to be Documents and Settings. Um, I'm sure you can find the equivalent on Windows. But on the Mac it's going to be Library, Application Support, Adobe, Flash CS4, EN, Configuration, and come down to Motion Presets. So you can see already that it's created an XML file for that motion preset. Now this XML file contains um, all of the information that we just created inside of the motion editor. So what we now want to do is to take this Swift file that we created um, which is the basis for our preset and I'm just going to copy this and paste it into this directory. Now in order to link up the two I simply need to just rename the Swift file the same as the XML file. So let me rename this to 360 rotation 3d.swift. Okay, so now that I have them named the same, now when we come over to the motion presets window, we can now see this preset uh, is now in there with this preview that we created. So now this will be, you know, persistent across. So now if I uh, let's quit out of Flash and let me relaunch Flash and let's let it load up here okay so now from here I'm going to create a new Flash file ActionScript 3 and we can see down in the presets I have that 360 rotation with the preview uh, you know so I can now fully see what this is going to give me and now let's just go ahead and create a uh, just a simple rectangle turn that into a symbol put the registration point in the center like it was on the on the flash icon and now to apply this simply just click apply so now you can see what's happened now we have this nice rotation now one of the things you'll notice is it's actually shrunk in size and that's because inside of my original movie I had actually scaled down the flash icon so basically when you create a preset everything is gonna go with it so um, you know just be aware of that fact so now if I test this movie you can now see we have that same exact 3D animation applied to a different object so again this is a really powerful feature of Flash CS4 um, because you can spend a lot of time really fine-tuning an animation um, but being able to save that out uh, so that you can use it at a later time uh, is just a really handy feature to have.